In this lesson, we're going to be learning the side fall. So once again, make sure that you have certified crash mats when you're doing these techniques. Um, I don't have any crash mats at home, so I wasn't able to do these indoors. My backyard is torn up right now, so I can't use my backyard. Um, if you don't have crash mats, you can practice these techniques on grass, but it's still not ideal. Uh, landing on grass is still much harder uh, than landing on a crash mat. So I highly recommend that you get a crash mat. And remember a yoga mat, something like that is not good enough. A yoga mat is a long, long way away from being a crash mat. So a crash mat is meant to take impacts. It's meant to take your body weight falling on it and help you avoid serious injury. So for side fall, what we're going to be doing here, again, starting from a standing position. If you're going to be falling to your right side, like I am in the video here, what you're going to do is grab the knot on your belt with your left hand, and then you're going to kick your right leg to the side. So swing your right leg to the side, and then lower yourself down and slap the ground with your right hand. And you're going to see that here in just a moment. If you're going left side, it's going to be exactly the same thing, but just reverse, reverse everything that I just said. But watching here, dropping down and then slapping the arm on the ground. Very important to keep your chin tucked in. You don't want your head to whip back and hit the ground. So your chin has to be tucked. As a rule of thumb, you should be looking at the knot in your belt. When you come down so you notice my left hand is still grabbing the knot in my belt my right leg is extended long and you can see that my right arm my hand is slapping the ground to absorb that impact all the way up the arm and you notice that it's about 45 degrees out from my body it's a mistake to have the arm too close to your leg and it's also a mistake to have your arm way out to the side, 90 degrees from your body. If you do that, you're gonna put pressure on your shoulder. You're gonna, you're gonna injure your shoulder if you do that. So it has, to be, it has to be about 45 degrees from your body. So that position right there. So watching this again, so from the beginning, you can see I'm lowering myself down pretty slowly. If I had a crash mat to demonstrate, then the advanced version of this technique is instead of swinging your leg to the side and dropping down, what you actually do is you kick the other leg out from underneath you and you swing and drop straight down to the ground. So it's a, a much harder impact than if you can bend, in this case, bend the left leg and lower yourself to the ground. The advanced version, you actually kick the leg right out from underneath you to simulate a leg sweep, and then you drop straight down, and you do the technique the same way. It's just a much more violent fall. But looking at this from the side, so there you can see it. So I'm lowering myself down to show the technique. Here you can see I'm grabbing the knot in my belt, and here you can see swinging the leg out to the front and here I'm bending the other leg to lower myself down. So reducing the impact and then slapping the arm down on the ground, keeping the chin tucked in and you can see the left leg is stretched out long and there's the finishing position. And again, you can see the arm is here about 45 out from the body it's not way out over here. This would be wrong. This would injure your shoulder if you had your arm way out here. So it's got to be in closer, chin tucked so that your head doesn't smack the ground when you're going backward. And why would you use a technique like this? Well, this would, again, in a real world scenario, if somebody leg sweeps you, somebody kicks your legs out from underneath you, 
You might fall down this way and have to protect yourself so that you can avoid injury when you fall or minimize injury when you fall. Because if this is, uh, for example, concrete, you're going to be taking bumps and bruises no matter what you do when you go down. But you would rather walk away with some bumps and bruises than walk away with some broken bones or a concussion. So this is helping minimize damage in that sense. So if you're in a real fight and somebody kicks your leg out from underneath you or a free sparring match uh, and somebody leg sweeps you or something and you're going down hard, this helps save you from serious injury. Uh, with the Hapkido, advanced Hapkido techniques that we're learning or we're getting into now, or we're getting into throws, you need to be able to land properly to avoid injury. There are many techniques coming up that are going to involve throws. So very important that you can land safely out of those when you're working with a partner. Uh, so many reasons to have these techniques and also the higher level kicking techniques that we're going to get into where we're doing jumping and flying techniques. If you do one of those techniques incorrectly, you may find that you're coming down hard and you're going to have to brace for impact and be able to land safely to protect yourself. It happens. So get a certified crash mat. If you're going to practice these techniques indoors, if you're going to do them outside, grass is probably your best option at that point, but I still highly recommend doing it inside with crash mats. But that is the side fall.